that goods-based economies tended to outperform service-oriented economies of our region. And so, in fact, most of the growth was led by uh, three member countries with, who are actually considered to be goods-based economies, and those are Guyana, Haiti, Suriname, and to some extent uh, Trinidad and Tobago, although the growth rate in that economy was not as high as in the other three. There was a 1% to 3% level of growth in half of our service-oriented economies. And that was primarily driven by construction activity, which was spurred by growth in most of our economies due to extra government expenditure and capital projects, some uptick in foreign direct investment in the tourism sector, and by private, private sector construction initiatives. Let me just go into a bit more detail as what has happened into some of the other sectors. Manufacturing activity rebounded in Trinidad and Tobago in 2013 due to an uptick in cement production in that, in that, in that economy in 2013. This was a rebound from 2012 where they experienced uh, some amount of uh, labor market um, unrest with respect to their cement production. There was an improvement in manufacturing in Guyana, primarily due to an uptick in the production of milled rice, and this compensated for a decline in sugar production in Guyana. Barbados's food production also showed some improvements, and that tended to help uh, its manufacturing sector here. And also in Dominica, there was an uptick in beverage production, soap and paint production as well. However, in some of our economies, there was a slight decline in terms of our manufacturing activity. That happened in Jamaica due to weak domestic demand and also a reduction in ethanol production in that island. And as well as there was a decline in manufacturing output in both St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as in, with respect to exports within that economy as it related to electrical components and also in beverage is manufacturing. Let me just end here by saying that, manu by, that mining activity improved somewhat in Guyana and Suriname with respect to gold production there, mainly driven by small-scale investments in mining, as well as higher prices for diamonds, which actually led to increased declarations of uh, diamonds in those economies. However, in respect of bauxite production, this tended to have declined in both Guyana and Suriname, but luckily in Jamaica, this alumina production increased in Jamaica due to the resolution of technical issues in that economy. In the other mining economies of uh, the region, we found that oil production was negatively impacted, primarily in Belize, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago, due to reduced yields and oil fields in Belize, reserve depletion in Suriname, as well as maintenance issues in Trinidad and Tobago. Let me focus a bit more now on what's happened to tourism outputs in many of our economies, as it were. A closer look at tourism has shown that the sector continued to expand in most of the tourism-based economies of the region. And, for example, there was some some growth in non-traditional tourist destinations here. Um, here I can point out in particular those of uh, Guyana and Suriname experienced uh, growth in tourism uh, arrivals. Stayover arrivals increased most of all in Montserrat, and uh, that was actually a spillover effect of their 50th uh, festival celebrations which actually occurred towards the end of 2012. So therefore, their stayover arrivals uh, were impacted positively by that in the early parts of 2013. Now, for some of the other islands that are heavily dependent on tourism, and here I can point out in particular Antigua, Bahamas, uh, Barbados, these countries experienced some downturn in their tourism arrivals due primarily to a reduced airlift and the... Uh, extremely high cost of intra-regional uh, air travel. This is a particularly useful chart for you to look at, because although, for example, in 2013, 
we found that global economies grew. From this chart, we can see that the performance of our economies are lagging those of our, of our peers, in particular those of other small island developing states. Why is that so? We found that in the downturn, which began in 2008 and 2009, that in tourism-based economies, the high income elasticity of demand associated with leisure travel meant that there was a significant impact on tourism arrivals for many of our service-based economies. This has led to and has revealed certain structural deficiencies within our economies that are primarily dependent on tourism and some of those deficiencies still remain today. This has meant that because we've had lower tourism arrivals and lower tourism receipts, there has been a knock-on effect on the fiscal performance of many of our countries, and I will come to that shortly. What I would like to show here in particular with this slide is that small size is no excuse for, for underperformance, as it were. The Caribbean economies are still lagging behind other small island developing states, and it means that certain critical structural problems need to be addressed within our economies if we are to have sustainable and lasting growth in the future. Some of these regulatory reforms include, for example, addressing the cost of doing business within our countries, as well as examining the overall cost of energy within our economies, and I will speak to that in a little later on, as well as the need for governments to further tighten their fiscal accounts. I now turn to the, the fiscal performance within our foreign member countries, <coughs> as it were. So the structural problems alluded to in the earlier slide have been translated into deteriorating fiscal accounts in most of our highly indebted foreign member countries. We found that, for example, in St. Lucia and Barbados, there was the most notable deterioration in debt accumulations. This was followed by those of Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Dominica to some extent. This high accumulation of debt and worsening fiscal positions also meant that there were credit rating downgrades in some of our borrowing member countries. Now conversely, in some of the other highly indebted countries of the region, namely Belize, Jamaica, and St. Kitts and Nevis, successful debt restructuring in those economies actually saw improvements in fiscal performance over the course of 2013. Good progress was also made by countries who are involved in IMF-sponsored adjustment programs, and this is in particular related to Jamaica and St. Kitts and Nevis. However, in other less indebted countries uh, within the region, we also saw, to some extent, large increases in debt, although their overall debt-to-GDP ratios remain relatively low. So, for example, Suriname's public debt, although still low, deteriorated considerably in the year due to higher capital outlays and, the, and wage increases as well as revenue from mining declined within that country. Trinidad and Tobago's debt also increased due to an acceleration in capital expenditure in that country and also wage settlements. Guyana, however, recorded a fiscal surplus, which was very good news, due to debt relief and loan repayments helped their lower debt stock. So let me turn to the global outlook, as it were, for our economies and for the world. In 2014, we are expecting global growth to continue and to, in fact, accelerate as we expect there will be greater and faster growth in the U.S. and we are also expecting a return of growth in the EU, in the EU block of countries. 
We're expecting continued growth in emerging and developing economies, despite what might be considered to be slower growth in China. Although any of us here in the Caribbean would be, would be very happy to have that lower growth, uh, growth in, in, in economic activity that China will be experiencing over the next couple of years. However, for the global economy, there are some downside risks that remain. And those are mainly uh, actually related to the tapering of quantitative easing in the United States. Uh, that is the reduction of the bond buying program by the Federal Reserve of the United States. This is actually likely to lead to some re reverse flows of investment from emerging and developing economies away from emerging and developing economies towards the U.S. and perhaps also to the U.K. markets in anticipation of higher interest rates in those economies. That could provide some, some risk to our economies as we go forward. There's also likely to be some risk associated with the Chinese growth as their new, new growth rate might become a new lower normal as it were. And this is to be expected because we're expecting the Chinese economy to be rebalanced away from an export-driven economy to one that is led by demand consumption at home, as well as there may be a correction in property markets within China, as well as the Chinese authorities may also have to uh, do some corrections with respect to overexposed financial institutions in the Chinese market. How does this all relate to regional growth rates? Well, we're expecting in 2014 that the economies of the region will grow by 2.5%. This is up from 1.5% in 2013. We're expecting this to be driven by, by the continued recoveries in tourism as well as in foreign direct investment, which will strengthen and have spin-off benefits uh, in terms of construction and other real sector activity. Tourism is expected to grow due to increased airlift and as well as reduced fuel costs. <coughs> Commodity exporters in the region, however, may face lower prices and this may have a, a, a dampening impact on their overall growth forecast. However, lower commodity prices is good news for the importers of our region, as this will actually have a dampening impact on inflation and therefore have positive impacts on the balance of payments accounts for our countries. However, although we expect growth to accelerate in 2014, we are still expecting higher levels of unemployment in our countries due to rigidities in our labor markets as well as the possibility of further public sector and private sector layoffs, um, as well as hiring freezes, as many of our economies, due to their high debts, may be engaged in structural adjustment programs and fiscal correction uh, to solve many of these issues. So, let me just move to part C now where I will speak about some of the messages that Caribbean Development Bank would like to reiterate to policymakers within the region.